this video I'm going to show you some of the features of grouping and grouped shapes in Visio. And this, uh, keep in mind the containers you saw in the last video. The containers kind of had a soft association between shapes. You didn't have to do anything but drag a shape onto a container and it all of a sudden it belonged to a container. With groups it's a little bit more hard and fast. It's something you have to decide to do and and really want to do and remember that you've done it. So let's see what I'm talking about right now. So imagine I'm working on a living room layout. I've opened the office plan template and I've started dragging some furniture out here. I'm going to decide, let's say that we'll do the, the reception area for, maybe we have a several several stories on our in our office building and we want to design a standard reception area. Maybe we have several lounge areas and they're all the same. So we'll put a coffee table there, put a round, uh, round corner there and we can just rotate it around and scoot it right in there. And that looks pretty good. We could use that over and over in all the little nooks and crannies in our in our office space. So now to group them together, because they're all individual, I'll just drag a net around them and on the home tab just come over here to the range group and there's the group button right there so let's just click on that and pick the group option and you can see now we've got a new alignment box with a new set of selection handles that let us know that this looks like it's just one big shape so i can control drag copies of that around as i like and place them on different office plans or copy them into other drawings as i like now, this is a shape, just like any other shape. I can say standard lounge furniture layout, just like that. Click away, and you can see that that text belongs to the group. And if I give the group a fill color, you'll see that all the shapes get the same color, which you may or may not like. In some ways, that's labor savings. and in other instances, that's kind of annoying. So what can you do? Well, you could ungroup the shape to get back at them, but you might not want to do that because you've worked carefully to arrange these together and you want to use this as a unit. So what you can do is sub-select shapes within inside the group. And what you do is you select the group once, then you click again on another shape. So you can see that it's it's got a different, it's got its old selection handles are showing and I can actually give it a different color like that. So let's talk a little bit more about the selection handles. When I select a normal shape, you see these deep blue handles around the edge. And if it's a group shape, I can click again, and we see these lighter, washed out, gray handles, silver handles. And you'll also notice that the group's outline is shown here with a dashed outline. So there's a couple of visual cues that let me know that I've subselected a shape, which is really important because if you've forgotten that you subselect a shape, it's really easy to drag it off and forget that you're you're not working with the shape, but you're working within a group. So see what happens when we do this and we click away and we reselect our group. That shape is still part of the group, even though it's way over here. So you might not want to do that. So make sure you learn subselection and what it looks like. Okay. Another thing that's important to note about groups is that we've effectively buried these shapes inside the group. If you look at the round corner shape or any of the other furniture shapes, you'll see that it act actually has its own set of shape data fields. Now, I don't want to go into shape data that much. The point is, when I select the shape on the page, I can easily edit the various fields that it comes with. When it's put inside of a group, you don't see those anymore, so it's hard to get at them. You have to remember to sub-select the shape to get to them. So this isn't the case with containers because everything stays at the top level, so to speak. With groups, you've kind of buried things down inside. So there's, a, there's an extra layer of work in between which you've done. But for something like this, it's much easier to copy and paste this group to other pages and move it around. And maybe you want to change the orientation. You can simply rotate it like that. It's not a lot of work. Very handy, and this is the only way to do it up until Visio 2010 when containers came to town. If you want to get rid of the group, it's just a matter of going to the group drop down and clicking ungroup or as I like to do just right click and choose 
ungroup and you've got your individual pieces back again. Not hard at all. Now, a lot of Visio shapes are groups in themselves that are designed to stay together. You can see that this table with set of chairs allows you to actually subselect them, but there are a lot of shapes that are locked against subselection. So you, if you see, yeah, that's a bad example. <laughs> 